Boom. Um, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Jelly Ben Fish Academy. Um, Mr. Uyi, this video is specially designed for you to show to you that uh, the design you requested yesterday is ready. A design for a 20,000 capacity tarpaulin fish farm and um, everything on how water goes into the ponds, leave the ponds, get into the return to earth system, the building for staff, building for feed and borehole positioning and all that is properly explained in the video. So just take your time, go through this video, understand the step-by-step -step procedures involved and let us know how to get started. So um, for those that are watching this video for the first time, you can subscribe to our channel, like our videos and then also consider installing a tarpaulin farm in your place. The beauty about installation of tarpaulin farms is that you can always relocate your farm to any other location in case you want to change location without losing materials, okay? You can relocate anytime. And concrete ponds are good. The only disadvantage with them is that you have to build and build it permanently for that purpose. If you want to use the land for something else, you may have to destroy your properties in the process of doing that. So tarpaulin ponds are quite very much cheaper and they are very mobile. So please go through this video understand the step-by-step -step procedures and let's get started Boom. all right sir so this is exactly um, a sketch of uh, what we're about to do in your farm so um, this table comprises a lot of things which i'm going to explain very briefly so that uh, you have a perfect understanding of uh, the installation process of the 20,000 capacity farm in your farm. So basically, if you check the dimension, this is 50 by 100, okay? So this is a 50 by 100 core one plot of land here in Nigeria. So uh, Mr. Uyi, we are going with 20 ponds. If you check, this is P1, P2, P3, P here signify ponds. So here you have a total of six ponds. Here you have a total of seven. Here you have a total of seven. That's a total of 20 ponds, okay? And the dimension of each of these ponds is 10 by 10. 10 by 10 by 4, and that's 1,000 capacity for each of the ponds. So by the time you add 1,000 into 20 places, that gives you 20,000 capacity. Okay? So basically, how is this plan designed to be? First, you have a borehole here, an industrial borehole that can power all the ponds put together. The ponds are divided into three sectors. The first sector here is uh, the the A, the B, and the C. Let's call them A, B, and C sector. Now, the A sector comprises the nursery pond, or let me say the pre-nursery pond and the nursery ponds. The first three ponds here are the nursery ponds, the pre-nursery. Let me use the word pre-nursery so that this can be nursery from four to six. So the pre-nursery ponds are the ones you will need to roof to avoid temperature or acid rain to affect them. So this one, two, three are the pre-nursery. So we have this one roof at this point, then, the nursery ponds four, five, six. Once they finish from here, they graduate to this stage that is in their third month now. They will graduate to the B sector of the ponds. So as their sizes are increasing, so they are growing. So by the time they finish here in their third, fourth month, in their fifth, six months, they enter the side of the pond. And this is where they are now ready to sell out in case you want to sell them at one kg. But at the B sector, they are expected to already be hitting 600, 700 grams which you can sell as a Benwari as the case may be. So first, this is the borehole. This industrial borehole will power all these ponds together. And of course, the inlet pipes are the ones you see that runs through here. Another one goes through like this and runs through here. Another one goes through like this and runs through here. So from here, water can flow into here. If you don't want it to go through ponds B and C, you lock it at this point and then it feeds everybody here. And of course, each of them have their valves, which you can always control as the farm grows and then if you want water to flow through this B part of the ponds then you lock here open here and then the water will flow and lock here so the water flows into this part and feed into the B ponds if you don't want to feed A and B but you want to feed the C part of the ponds all you need to do is lock here and lock here so the water coming from here goes through here and then feeds each of these ponds so that is how water will go into each of the inlet pipes now, what about the outlets? When the fish have saturated the water and the water has to be discarded, what happens next? All these dotted lines you hear here are underground pipes. It's written there underground outlets. So you see them. This is the first underground outlet for the ponds A, the second underground outlet for the ponds B, the third underground outlet for the point C. 
So all of them connect together to a chamber before it goes into the return to earth. RTE, return to earth. Okay? So everything you see here is inside the ground. So the connections are neat, clean, and very, very effulgent. So that is for this. And then also, another important thing about this chamber, this chamber is very important because at times solid waste can come from the ponds and they are not supposed to go into the return to earth because the hole for the return to earth is not mighty and can easily get blocked. So you have a chamber here that will gather all the solid materials that are coming from each of these ponds before it goes into the return to earth. So only liquid goes into the return to earth to avoid blocking it as time goes on. So that is exactly how the system is. Then this is an overhead tank just to store some water for use in case maybe there is no means to power. Now, another way is how do you power your borehole? The powering of your borehole can be done through a solar system. Yes, you can install a solar system that can power this borehole for you and you don't need to be on a generator all the time. Then what you see here are the staff building. This is for staff and then this is for storing of feeds. So at least you should have two staffs for such a capacity of farm. Three is better, but if you have two, it's just okay. Then this is where the feed can be stored for use as it goes. Like I told you before, it's best for you to just talk for six months direct so that the fluctuation of prices will not affect you. Or better still, you can just decide to stock for half of the time of the duration. If it will take you four months to get to the size of fish you want, you stock for two months. If it will take you six months to get to the size of fish you want, you stock for three months so that you are not affected with inflation of prices as time goes on. So everything you see here fits into a 50 by 100. And the spacing between the ponds, very important. If you check here, the dimension from here to here is five feet. That means from the fence to the first pond, you have five feet gap. And then also from pond to pond, you have five feet gap. So from here to here is five feet, from here to here is as well five feet. And then the spacing between ponds in the vertical dimension is three feet. So from here to here is three feet, here to here is three feet, here to here is three feet. So you have enough movement around each of the ponds. You can go in from one place to another and everything is properly spaced. So everything you see here will take you a total of 20,000 capacity farm. All right, then here, what you see here is the gate. This is the gate entrance to the house you showed me when we were on site. So this is the gate and then this is the walkway, which you said has to be maintained. So this walkway is not affected. Everything that you see here can be duplicated to the other part um, of the land, which is on this side. So this is just the proposal for the 50 by 100 um, tarpaulin pond, 20,000 capacity farm we are building. And then also the other ones can fit in from this part of the farm. So basically that is the uh, design for the 20,000 capacity fish farm. And that is coming to you through Julian Fish Academy. Other viewers that may be seeing this video, if you're interested in this farm, it's a very beautiful thing to do. At times, tarpaulin ponds can be very, very, um, can be very, very much economical than concrete ponds. The reason is because tarpaulin ponds can be used in any location of your choice. If, for example, you don't want to continue using this land for this farm purpose and you want to use the land for something else you can remove every setup we have here and take it to another location and you are not losing anything but when it is used when it is constructed by the use of concrete it's permanent if you have to relocate then you have to destroy your investment so that's the disadvantage between concrete and tarpaulin although both of them have their sides both of them have their ups and down but Tarpaulin ponds can be very, very economical in the sense of relocation, in the sense of change of business idea, and many other things that may come up as the farm goes on. So basically, this is a 20,000 capacity proposal fish farm. If you're interested in this, you can always let us know and we will design it and come and install it for you anywhere you find yourself, not just in Nigeria, but in the whole world at large. So Mr. Uyi, your design is ready. At this point, I have to hear from you so that we take the next step. Thank you.